First, I'd like to start off by welcoming everyone. Good evening. Um, thank you for attending this meeting. I do know that we have attendees from across the globe right now from our Croatia campus. I understand it's pretty late, so I'm glad that those of you that are here actually made it. I will be your host tonight, Jeremy, and we do have our guest speaker, Mr. Keith Walling. Um, this is my first time facilitating a meeting, um, going from start to finish and putting the whole thing together, actually. I'd like to say thank you to my professors, my e-board members, and my faculty, um, RIT faculty staff as well, because this meeting wouldn't be happening if it weren't for you guys. Um, throughout the meeting, if you guys have any questions, please do feel free to raise your hand or leave a message in the chat box, and I will get to you guys. Um, we are all gathered here today to celebrate World Tourism Day. What that is, is an international observance day chosen back in the 1970s to celebrate and recognize tourism and its many values. Uh, these values include social, cultural, political, and economic values. And right now, because of COVID, we are all constricted to doing many things. And one of the biggest industries that are affected is tourism. What United Nations World Tourism Organization believes is that tourism is a key pillar for the conservation of natural and cultural heritage which makes it important that we rebuild tourism during times like this. Uh, we have today a guest speaker, Mr. Keith Wolling, who will be providing us with a presentation about our current industry and our future flows. Uh, Mr. Keith Wolling is one of us. He's an RIT alumni, uh, hospitality tourism management class of 75. He was the past president of Skull International Orlando 2019. And right now he is a board member um, but Mr. Walling does not actually believe in retirement, which he will tell you more about later. And yeah, let's get started. First, let's do an introduction with our e-board. Uh, that's me. I'm from Guangzhou, China. I was raised in Brooklyn, New York. This is my last year at RIT as a hospitality and tourism major. Um, some achievements that I've made were um, getting the honors of joining Eta Sigma Delta. I'm in a fraternity called Kappa Delta Rho, which I'm also a brother of. I was a RHA award recipient, the Rochester Hotel Association Award that I got last fall. Some of my hobbies are bike riding and traveling. Hi everyone, my name is Amanda. I'm currently the president of the American Hotel and excuse me, Lodging Association here on campus. Um, I was born and raised here in Rochester, and this will be my second year at RIT as a transfer from MCC. Um, currently a third year in the hospitality and tourism program. And then I also was inducted into Eta Sigma Delta um, this past spring. And I'm also um, serving as the VP of chapter operations for Delta Sigma Pi, which is just a co-ed um, professional business fraternity here at Saunders. And my hobbies are basically any free time I have, I just enjoy exploring Rochester. May that be little small hikes or walks or enjoying the different restaurants here. Hey guys, I'm Warren. I'm the president of Ada Sigma Delta. Um, I'm from Geneva, grew up about an hour away. This is actually my last semester in our HTM program. Um, I was inducted into Eta Sigma Delta last semester. Um, I am an alumni of Zeta Tau Alpha, and last year I received the um, Statler Award. So that was kind of cool. Um, aside from school, I like to travel. I cook a lot, hang out with my cats a lot. Um, that's about it. Hi, my name is Garrett, and I'm the Director of Marketing and Public Relations for our Hospitality Clubs. I'm also from Rochester, uh, grew up in East Irondequoit here, born and raised. I'm in my second year of Hospitality and Tourism Management, and in my free time, some things I enjoy are soccer, tennis, mountain biking, and traveling. Uh, definitely enjoy all of those a lot, and I'm also very into aviation, anything to do with planes. Uh, commercial airplanes or military aircraft. Um, I always love going to the air shows and stuff like that. So, yeah. 
Hello, everyone. To repeat Jeremy's sentiments, I'm super excited for everyone to be here today. Um, my name is Ndidi Chima, and I'm the Vice President, Treasurer, and Secretary of HFTP, as well as the Treasurer and Secretary for all our hospitality clubs. Um, I'm, born, I'm from Baltimore, Maryland, and I'm a second year hospitality management and international business level majoring student. Um, currently, I'm a fun fact about me is that I'm working towards a personal goal of studying abroad once a year. It's kind of being messed up with COVID, but however, I'm still working through it and getting around things. Um, I also am a brother of Delta Sigma Pi and a member of Women in Business and the Organization of African Students, to name a few of my involvements on campus. And a fun fact is that I can sleep anywhere under any circumstances at literally any time. Thank you all once again for joining us. Hi everyone, my name is also Lauren. I am the HFTP event and community service chair. I am from Pittsburgh, New York, which is about 15 minutes away from RIT. I'm a third year business management and hospitality and tourism double major. And some of my hobbies include traveling, cooking and playing board games. All right, it's my turn. Hi. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jerry Shea. I'm the uh, faculty advisor for the, you know, AHLA, um, you know, student chapter. I'm originally from Taiwan. Um, I joined RIT about five years ago, and I have been the, you know, um, the faculty advisor for our AHLA student club for almost like uh, since like 2016. And I think a lot of you know me already. I teach mostly the you know hotel related courses here in the department. Um, in terms of my hobbies, I, I love making Chinese dumplings. I wish that you know that's wait until the you know the COVID nineteen is over. I would like to call for a big party, you know, for the you know our student clubs. Let's get together. I make tons of Chinese dumplings for you guys. It's very nice to have you all here. Thank you. So my turn, eh? Mohamed Keskin. I am the HFTP and Eta Sigma Delta advisor. I have been working at RIT since 2013, originally from Turkey. I teach customer experience management and I teach a course on information systems and technology. My research is dealing with hospitality and tourism as well, destination marketing and tourist behavior mainly. I like visiting places as well. I like eating a lot, as you can see. And, you know, one of the quotes that I want to show to tell you today is, you know, 80% of success is just showing up. I think this is very much correct in our uh, hospitality business as well. And another one is life is like 10% like what happens to you and 90% how to react to it, right? So as hospitality students as well, we also need to make sure how to react to those situations and, you know, make most, of out of, make most out of it. All right. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you, Kate, and everybody. All right, so I just want to introduce AHLA real quick. Um, so basically, it's an organization that includes and protects many sectors within the hospitality industry, and that even includes the people that actually help run the businesses, may that be front or back of the house, um, and they even do this um, by advocating even on a governmental level. Um, especially with COVID going on, they've really been working hard to ensure that jobs are being saved within our sector. And then um, on a more personal note, what we do um, as the student chapter, we really um, focus on providing opportunity and resources for students here on campus um, to enable each other to be able to either strengthen our skills on a professional, excuse me, professional or academic level. Um, one of our most popular and more successful events that we've held is the Valentine's Day dinner. Um, so usually that is more of a fundraising event for us and we usually do very well with that. And I hope even despite COVID, we can really get our creative juices going and hopefully find another way to have, hold our events here on campus. Thank you, Amanda. Um, so HFTP, we stand for Hospitality Financial and Technology Professionals. Really, we get into every aspect of the hospitality industry, whether it goes from technology, financial. We are always up to date with the current technology in our industry, and we always try to keep our members updated as well. 
So we were established in 1952. We're a nonprofit or association headquartered in Austin, Texas. Uh, one of our bigger events throughout the year, High Tech, it's a convention where basically everyone in the hospitality industry around the world comes to show what is new, what is trending, so that everybody can learn from these experiences. Uh, they also have offices in Hong Kong, United Kingdom, the Netherlands, and Dubai. HFTP is recognized as one of the spokes group for finance and technology segments in our industry, and also our members, which span throughout the globe. Right now, we are trying to recruit members for our club. Uh, if you're a student, it's a free membership. And for this semester, we are actually doing something very special. We put all of our three clubs, including ESD and AHLA into one, and we are trying to make a bigger um, collaborative effort out of that. So what we do is that we um, focus on hospitality and finance technology, like I said before. We, as a student chapter, we try to host these events and equip ourselves for a career um, throughout our networks, education, and professional opportunities. Um, what we've done were some, of the, some things in the past with the presidential ball, which we attended. We were, had the honors of um, being invited to that. We have our hangouts. Usually we go through um, three member meetings throughout the semester where we usually serve food, but with COVID, a lot of that were canceled. So that's why we're on Zoom doing this right now. And uh, fall picnic, we just set up our table, introduce ourselves to the other members and get potential new people and a Saunders holiday party, which was the first time we did that last year, but it was a great experience. Um, yeah, looking forward to meeting some of you guys. And then Ada Sigma Delta is actually an international honor society. Um, it was established specifically for students in hospitality and tourism programs. Um, so the purpose of our chapter and the other 90 chapters around the world is to recognize both scholastic and professional achievements of our students as they uphold standards of excellence in all aspects of their professionalism and their studies. So we like to kind of go beyond just like your accolades in school. Um, it's kind of seeing like what you can do in the work environment and like helping you get ahead. Um, so what we do is we provide an opportunity for our outstanding students to grow their professional network and distinguish themselves from their peers in the eyes of their educators, recruiters, executives, and potential mentors. Um, our main goal is to really get you set up with a strong network for once you get out of college. Thank you, Lauren. Um, so this is our tentative, tentative calendar for our remaining of the academic year. This is always subject to change in case COVID ruins any of our plans again. Um, so next month, we're going to have a second member meeting and workshop. Also, next month is the high tech convention that I've spoken about. If you were a member, you would get to join or you would get a discount on that. Um, and then we'll have a third member meeting. Basically, every we'll have one member meeting every month until the end of the school year. Um, we'll try to make it in person, depending on RIT guidelines with these events. And after that, we will have the Valentine's Day dinner if it's permitted. And going on, we're going to keep doing these meetings until the end of the academic year. So now let's welcome our guest speaker, Mr. Keith Bowling. Keith, why don't you give us a little introduction about yourself and provide us with your presentation? Sure. Everybody, good evening. Welcome, uh, those in the, in the United States and those in Europe. Nice to have you uh, aboard with us this evening, and thank you for the invitation. Uh, I appreciate it very much. Well, I, I'm a New Yorker, as, as many of you are. I grew up in, uh, on Long Island and West Islip on the south shore of Long Island. Uh, Graduated high school, went to Morrisville State College for two years. Obviously, I uh, got more motivated in the hospitality, hotel, and restaurant field and transferred over to RIT, which we had another uh, successful uh, two years of uh, education plus uh, uh, sports as I was a track and field All-American uh, at the college and I'm in the Sports Hall of Fame. Uh, my wife's from Oswego, so if those from New York know that uh, where Oswego is, is only, what, about 80 miles up the road. So you know, I have many, much extended family in Rochester, Syracuse area. Uh, as well, and uh, also I have extended family in Sweden. Uh, so, you know, I'm very excited to be here tonight. I'm going to kind of take it, talk a little bit about world tourism, slide in and out to the audience that I have that uh, we have students from the college, 
uh, to talk about that a little bit. I am very excited that the, the college is part of the Saunders Business School now. I think it's just going to give us more, uh, more push on uh, what's going forward and the success of the program. But that said, I want to start out with a little quote. For those that are uh, obviously in college, you, you'll get this and may, you may think about it a little later. But allow your passion to become your purpose and soon it will become your profession. And I'll say it again slowly because we all say, what am I going to do when I graduate? Allow your passion to become your purpose and soon it will become your profession. I think it's a very solid quote. Uh, uh, something to really think about. But, you know, we talk about World Tourism Day. I would say, because I'm living in Orlando now, uh, I've been here in Florida for a number of years, but traveling uh, North America between the United States, Canada, and also down in South America for the hotel uh, business in Brazil. But I consider World Tourism Day is really every day. We make an impact on travelers from around the world in the United States on a daily basis. Uh, obviously, pre COVID, we've had record, uh, and I'm in Orlando, record visitation. Uh, uh, visits from people from all overseas. Orlando was probably the last four years was number one in, in the United States for travelers coming into the city. That says a lot. But to tell you a little bit about uh, really um, World Tourism Day, which obviously is the, is the 27th, which is Sunday. Since 1980, the United Nations World Tourism Organization has celebrated World Tourism Day uh, as international observances on September 27th. And the date was chosen on that day in 1970. Uh, so something to think about there, you know, the day itself, its purpose is to foster awareness among the international community of the importance of tourism and its social, cultural, political, economic value. When you work your way through that, and this year, obviously, the, the theme is tourism and rural development. So what does that really mean? The, the, the 2020 edition of World Tourism Day with the theme of tourism and rural development will celebrate the unique role that tourism plays in providing opportunities outside big cities and preserving cultural and natural heritage all around the world. We all know that travel is key and the, and the world continues to travel and continues to grow pre, pre COVID uh, people continue to explore. You know, I grew up in uh, 45 miles from New York city. So when you, when you're that close to the, the, the largest city in the world, it has everything you kind of refer back to, well, gee, when I grew up in the city, we had this and you go to a different city, you, di you didn't. But every city in the world, or the secondary cities, has a, a rural development that you should explore. I will tell you, like, why would people come to Rochester? Well, obviously, the colleges that are there, you know, obviously, you have the Erie Canal. Now, the Erie Canal is in New York. It's got a lot of history to it. It's quite unique. You've got the, the wine country south of Rochester. What does that tell you about the, the, the region and what it brings to the table? And to the north, you've got Lake Ontario, and uh, in the north, you have Canada. So these rural areas have their own special way to, that you could explore, whether you want to do a staycation or something locally, that you explore your own state. I can tell you over the years, I've been to all 50 states in the, in the United States. So it's really unique and really amazing what each state brings to the table. But I will tell you, being a little biased about New York State, New York has beaches. We've got water, we have falls. We've got mountains. We've got uh, wineries. We've got we have sports. We've got big colleges. We've got unique colleges. We've got independent colleges. The education is tremendous, and the education and what uh, what uh, the state brings to the table is quite unique and we're quite diverse. But but to, to really to zero in on that that tourism is vital to the success of many economies around the world. There are several benefits of tourism on host destinations. Tourism obviously boosts revenues uh, of the economy in those areas. But I will tell you, in, 19, in 2018, France was the most visited country in the world. Quite unique. There was the world number one destination for international tourists, the most recent figures from the World Trade Organization. The, 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 state, the country behind that was Spain. Obviously, it's pretty close. But not only do you have Madrid, but Barcelona continues to grow. And do you know that Barcelona is, is, a, is, a, um, is a cruise industry hub and it brings a lot to the table. But I will tell you what really strikes me every year that has, like last Sunday, the Tour de France finished. Three weeks of a grueling 2,200-mile race through the, through the country of, of uh, France. 
And I watched it in the morning because what it brings to the table is on and above the athleticism and, and the guts and the toughness of these, of these riders is, but I get a tour of France. And would you know that the second largest city in France is Lyon? It's, qu it's quite unique. And now all of a sudden on one part of the tour, they were talking about, they were getting close to Spain. So you start thinking about that, go, wait a minute, Spain? But they were on the, they started in Marseille and worked their way through. So they were along the lower border, working their way up to the, to the Alps and, and the Pyrenees and working their way through the coast on into France. But the scenery and the history that they bring to the table on the tour is quite unique. Many countries have that tour of France, got the tour of Spain, things like that. But, but I think that's just one thing to say that what our world has to offer is quite unique and travel and tourism is a, is a driver and the hospitality industry is a big driver in the world, no less in the United States. But back to the student side of things, you're in college. Two things I always say to my students when I talk to them and I see them is, do you have business cards and how's your LinkedIn? And the reason why I tell you that is that if you meet somebody, what are you gonna give them to, to tell them who you are? So I suggest as students, you always have a business card that you can design on your own that you have in your pocket at all times to give to somebody because it sets the tone of who you are. And LinkedIn will be the place that you update on all your activities because that's going to get you your job. It won't be Facebook. It's not going to be Twitter. It's not going to be these other TikTok and all these other areas because LinkedIn, before anybody has an interview, they're going to review it. And they're going to know more about you than you think you know. Like I know our connect, my connection with Jeremy is he's, a, he's from Brooklyn via China, but the connection was it's a New York thing. So you start that and all of a sudden it grows and it expands. So I would just tell you that just as me preaching as a, a leader in the industry is have business cards, have your LinkedIn updated, take a look at your friend's LinkedIn and learn about it and continue to learn, learn every day. You know, but tourism does have many categories. And I just wanna share with you um, what categories are tied really into um, tourism. Just bear with me with my notes here. Let me just throw you some of these sectors of tourism that are out there that you would think about. Airlines, attractions, consortia and hosts, cruise industry, destinations, lodging, services and technology, Sir, um, tour, 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 tour and travel, transportation and travel and industry insurance. And we can go on and on and on, but there's so much out there in the tourist industry that brings, to, brings, to, brings to us all together in a common denominator that is tourism drives the economies all around the world and people want to explore. Obviously, you know, the four, mo four most important types of tourism is domestic, international, intra-regional, and mass tourism. You know, with the COVID right now, obviously staycations is probably the way to go because we don't know really what, what's, what's going to happen. Hopefully things will settle down and, and, and it's up to all of us to do our part. But, you know, the char char characteristics of the tourist industry is inflexibility, perishability, and consistency, and tangibility. Those are really the key things that we talk about when we talk about tourism. Um, when you... When you talk about tourism and rural development, <clears throat> just look, I have some things from the uh, World Tourism Association. Tourism and rural development celebrates the sector's unique ability to drive economic development and provide opportunities outside of big cities, including those communities that would otherwise be left behind. World Tourism Day also highlights the importance of role, uh, role tourism plays in preserving and promoting a cultural and heritage all around the world. See, that's the key. It's not all about the big cities. If you explore, like a few years ago, we met our extended family in Frankfurt in Germany, and we drove the country. And you get to meet the locals and see what it's about. We did that in Sweden too. We flew in, stayed with our relatives, and explored the country. And we did that in London as well, because what the countryside brings to the table is things you would go, I never knew that. And I just think it's something that you need to explore, including in the United States. Tourism helps rural communities hold on to the unique natural and cultural heritage supporting conservation projects, including those, those safeguarding endangered species, lost position and flavors. But tourism this year, the host for the World Travel Day is, is really, they did it, it's cross-border cooperation this year. So this year it's really Argentina, Brazil, Paraguay, Uruguay, plus Chile. Now you say it's all about South America. 
the one thing I could share with you is the Olympics come every four years, obviously, except for this year. But what does, what does the Olympics do to tourism? All of a sudden, that particular city or country gets exposure for three weeks. So, so you get tourism for three weeks in that specific area. And what it brings to the table is tourism gets a boost post, post Olympics. It, you know, uh, next year, it's obviously going to be in Japan. You know, the, the Summer Olympics will be in another section of China. But, you know, like Barcelona wasn't on the map till, map till they had the Summer Olympics. You know, but uh, even last week with the Tour de France, when they drove through Grenoble, years ago, Grenoble had the Winter Olympics. So it's quite unique. I could tell you I went to Brazil on business quite often uh, for the hotel industry to pr uh, promote and learn more about the culture down there. I will tell you that Brazil is a very young country. The people are very uh, careful. They actually set up um, travel funds for their trips abroad and they can bring X amount of cash into the United States because they come up here and buy things that's cheaper and they'll stay for two, three weeks at a time uh, because that's what they do. And it's quite unique. Brazil, congestion is there. The populations is quite busy. A lot of people are on mopeds and motorcycles. It's an expensive city, but uh, the tourism, what the people bring to the table is quite unique because you think of South America, you think of coffee. Well, no, there's a lot of good wines out of South America. You probably have tried them, and hopefully you will. But South America is, is exploring, and with the, the Summer Olympics of Rio de Janeiro, obviously brought a lot to the table there as well. So I just wanted to share that with you a little bit about tourism. But these are unique countries down in South America. Now, when I talk about travel and tourism, there's an organization that's global called SCAL, S-K-A-L. And if you go to scal.org, it's an International Tourism Travel Association. And I was president last year. I've been on the board for a number of years. This year, I'm still on the board, and I'm, uh, as I did last year, handling membership. But I'll tell you a little bit about SCAL. SCAL is a professional organization with tourism leaders around the world, promoting global tourism and friendship. It is the only international group uniting all branches of the travel and tourism industry. Its members, the industry's managers and executives meet at local, national, regional, and international levels to discuss and pursue topics of common interest. So SCAL, so if I could tell you a little bit about SCAL Orlando, and I'll talk, every time a SCAL meets, we have a toast in the beginning of the session and at the end of the session. And basically, this is what we say. Uh, it, we talk about SCAL and we cheer to friendship, good health, Happiness, long life, and skull. So we raise our glasses, whether it's a glass of wine or a beverage of choice, but we review happiness, good health, friendship, and long life. And when you travel the world, there are skull clubs all around the world. There's probably over 15,000 members uh, globally, over 200 uh, clubs globally. Uh, actually, the database is over 14,000 members and continues to grow. Obviously, it's building relationships and lifelong uh, uh, friendships with leaders around the world. I mean, last year I met the president of a skull club down in uh, down in uh, down in Peru. So you get to meet quite uh, a lot of different people in the world, and it's quite unique. But skull itself, I will tell you, formed uh, back in 1932, and it was shortly after the inauguration of the first joint Swedish and French air service between Stockholm and Paris. A group of travel people from the French capital were involved to make an exploratory fight, flight. Uh, over the new route. So at that point, the Paris Club was formed in 1932. T 12 other clubs were in five countries were formed right after that. And it really started with air travel. So quite, quite unique, you know, to say the least. The uh, there, um, Skal USA and Skal International have webinars right now that they have on a monthly basis with unique speakers because Obviously, COVID has changed things, so we typically cannot meet to talk about uh, what our clubs are doing and where we're going. But I will tell you, in, in the United States, we don't have a club in upstate New York. We do have a club in New York City. We do have a club in, um, in New Jersey. But I can tell you that I oversee uh, the help, the membership with clubs in Fort Lauderdale and the Palm Beaches in Florida, Jacksonville, Miami, Orlando, Southwest Florida, and Tampa Bay. But we have clubs anywhere from Hawaii to New York. To Boston. Orlando is the second largest country, uh, club in the United States. Boston is number one, but we continue to grow. But you talk about COVID. 
the short story with COVID is this, it is what it is and we got to deal with it. And this is a politically aside. You got to do what you got to do to protect others in your family. Just think about that. You're in college, you go home, you got family, you got grandparents that may be living with you. You've got to protect everybody. And that has really changed the world as we speak. You know, travel was shut down, flights are a minimal coming in. They will gradually go grow, but it's going to take some time and there's going to be new, new uh, protocols in place. And I can tell you that there's new protocols at international airports that they have already started and will continue to grow. And it's, it's, it's going to be all about cooperation and we have to be flexible, but it's all about youth understanding what we're trying to accomplish, people buying in and cooperating. You know, the short story is that the, the COVID-19 has brought the world to a standstill and tourism has been hit the hardest hospitality in industry, hotel industry, restaurant industry, tourism and travel has probably been hit the hardest. Thus, the American Hotel Lodging Association helps us, protects us, uh, is in Washington, DT, Washington, DC to uh, support us and work the way through um, some of these uh, tough scenarios. You know, by cooperating closely with the World Health Organization, the lead organ agency for the management of this outbreak, we, we obviously have to follow health measures and implement in many ways to sort our way through this and we have to stay together on this and that's really where i, I come and say okay world travel day is, is very important to us but let's talk about who we are and what we're about and why we're in college obviously i had a quote that i started out earlier now i just want to tell you something and it's just a little story and bear with me but if i stood in front of everybody tonight and said i've got a 200 dollars bill i want to give you and i just said this is how it starts I'm in a room, I have a $200 bill, everybody's in the audience. And I would say to everybody, who would like this $200 bill? Everybody hopefully would raise their hand and I would like that. So I'm gonna go and give this to you, one of you, but first let me do this. I proceed to crumble up to the $200 bill. Then I ask who still wants it? Everybody still raises their hands. What if I do this? I drop it on the floor, I grind it up, grind it as much as I can to the floor with my shoe. Now I say, who wants it? Everybody still raises their hand, say, I want it. So, and then everybody still raises their hands. My friends, we have all learned a valuable lesson. You still want, wanted it because it, would not, it did not decrease in value. Many times in life, we are dropped, crumbled, and ground into the dirt by the decisions we make and the circumstances that come our way. We may feel as though we are worthless, but no matter what has happened or what will happen, you will never lose your value. Dirty or clean, crumbled or finely creased, you are still priceless to those who do love you. The worth of our lives, lives come not in what we do or whom we know, but by who we are. You are special and don't ever forget it. And I think that's important when your students are in college say, where am I going here? You obviously made a decision in your life that you are looking at the business aspect, hospitality, and a lot of the travel segments that I spoke about. But I think it plays a role that you've decided that, but you also need to be in the industry while you're in college so you can decide if you like what you wanna do or you can uh, uh, vertically go off into another segment of the industry to understand what, what you're about. But the reality is you also need a mentor. And you need people that are really going to look after you. I mentor three college students from the University of Central Florida, the Rosen Hospitality School, because part of the SCAL program is we have a young SCAL program, and that's global. And we, we identify students, we interview them, and then uh, each person on the board will take a student and mentor them through their last year of college. So last year, my three students graduated, all had jobs. Did, we're doing very well, and what shows up in February? COVID. What happens? They all get furloughed. But I can tell you, they're all back at work. Even two of them got promoted. So you put in your time, you work hard, understand the business, but you also gotta continue to learn and grow. And what I told them when they were furloughed is continue to learn and educate yourself. There are online courses that are free that you can take, and learn to make yourself more distinguishable than the other person if you have to go out and look for work. Because you know the world we live in right now, it's, it's very tough and it's a tough industry because there's a lot of people out of work. 
But what I want to share with you a little bit is about what, what great leaders are consist, what possesses the 10 core leadership values and who, what is it about? And it's something to think about. So first of all, integrity. Integrity is very important this day and age. The ability to delegate. Just remember, we can't do everything. Communication. Facebook is great, but how do you communicate online, through the chat rooms, through LinkedIn, to say who you are and what you're about? Self-awareness, you know who you are. When somebody meets you and you hand them a business card, you already set the tone with that person that this first guy or gal has something to talk about and they wanna learn more about you. Gratitude, obviously you, you appreciate People thank, what you, thank you for what you do. We also learn to be humble in our world, but at the end of the day, gratitude is important. important. Learning agility. As I said, continue to learn every day. I could tell you, I went to work every day and it was something, if I didn't learn something, I would say, why didn't I pick up something new today over the years? Influence. You have an influence on a lot of people. People will look up to you that you'll never even know that look up to you. But you're in an industry that's quite unique, quite distinctive, and it's a different industry every day and it changes. Emp empathy, you gotta learn to be sympathetic, understand the person that you're talking to, uh, and work with them and show them that you truly care, that that comes from the heart. Courage, we all have to have guts. It's not an easy business. You gotta learn what you can do and chip your way out and go, th go through uh, the tough times and know how to do it, and respect. Be respected. people. People want to know that they can look at you and be respected. And just one other note, just talking about who you are and what you're about. This is a quote that I just want to share with you. And I'll, I'll read it a couple of times. The cost of not following your heart is spending the rest of your life wishing you had. And I'll say it again. The cost of not following your heart is spending the rest of your, rest of your life wishing you had. And when I say to a lot of the young, uh, young, we'll say young scholars coming up, you know, 40s around the quarter. You may laugh at that and say, well, I'm only 22. Once you graduate college, things go by very fast. And you don't want to be at 40 go, wish I would have, should have, could have. Or in your, you're in a position that you hate. I will tell you in 43 years in the hospitality industry, I never hated once going to work. Were there tough days? You bet they were. We lived through a lot of different things. I remember 9-11. We had 9 11. We've had economic downfalls. We had 2008, the, the crash of the markets, and now we have COVID. These are all chapters in your life that you'll learn and grow and understand how you had to work, to work your way through that. It's not easy uh, uh, learning with a virtual, virtual aspect because, you know, I'm a type of person, I live by people, I connect with people, I want to interact with people, and whether I have to sit six feet apart, or have a cup of coffee or do it virtually or just by the phone, you miss that. But just remember one thing, you are valuable, you're in an industry that continues to grow, it's very diverse, and you meet unique people in this world. I've met presidents, I've met senators, I've met cardinals, I've met sports figures. But you know what? When you connect with people that are just everyday people and they remember you and they remember that story that you looked them in the eyes and thanked them, you will go a long way. And this industry is a unique industry. You can start at the front desk or you can work as a server or you can work as a dishwasher or room attendant. You could buy that hotel. You could buy that restaurant. The two toughest jobs in our industry is the dishwasher and a room attendant. And you know what? In our world, it's a very global world that we live in. And when you sit down, and every day I sat down with a different player at lunch to learn a little bit about them and their families because there's unique stories to be told, stories about what's happened in Venezuela, how long they'd have to stand in lines just to get water or get the toilet paper or fight for food because it's so expensive. But these people have stories to tell. And if they know you truly have an interest in them, that goes a long way. And I can't tell you that enough about, about our industry. It's, 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 it's the embassy of the world. We are the ambassadors. And I just want to share that with you to say tr world travel, Tourism day is every day because the amount of people you meet from different countries and different worlds, it's quite amazing and you can learn something. And your education sets the foundation for the future, but just remember, grow, put in your time, ask the questions, don't be afraid to ask the questions and be a star because you wanna, you wanna 
be unique in your own way that somebody says to you, I want Amanda. I want to talk to that Amanda. And, or I want to talk to that Jeremy. Be distinctive, stick out, be recognized for who you are. And you know what? Be a people person and it goes a long way. And I will tell you over the years, and I've been, it was in the industry a long time, and I'm very active in the community still. Years ago, when I was your age, getting promoted to be a GM of a hotel, my boss, who was German, told me two things in the hotel industry, and it won't change. People are looking for a smile, and they're looking for a clean room. I could have a bigger hotel, and one of my hotels was the largest franchise Sheridan in the world at one point. Uh, quite unique stories. But the reality, people want to smile in a clean room. And in the hotel industry, people still want to talk to somebody. They still want to interact with somebody. And they want to tell the story. Because we all can tell about the great hotels or restaurants or uh, airlines that we've flown. But you're also going to tell us the war stories that are out there that you aren't happy with. And you'll tell another 100 people. So I just want to end with this. You are special. You are unique. Be proud that you're a tiger. RIT will continue to grow and come a long way. And I'm very proud to represent RIT in the course of my life and what I bring to the table. So Jeremy and Mohammed and everybody, I just want to say thank you, but um, cheers to you. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. Thank you for that speech. Um, that was great. I'm always learning when you're speaking to me um, from all your past experiences. Uh, Let's get to the Q&A part where if see if our students have any questions for you. Sure. All right. Um, if you guys don't mind, can I start? Uh, I just wanted to ask, during, from all your experiences, what, do you, what was the hardest times that you had to go through and how did you really overcome that? Like, for example, um, when 9-11 hit or one of the financial crisis hits. Well, um, I'll tell you about 9-11. Tell you about so I was in Orlando at a big resort. Hotel was full. All of a sudden, at 8:43, and then the news, and I'm looking at the Trade Center in New York, which I was on the top of that Trade Center for cocktails or dinner many times. The 120 stories up, the elevator goes up in 90 seconds. It's quite amazing. 9/11 um, hit, and people couldn't move. Everything was shut down. So what we did was we, our sales team, solicited all the travel partners that had people in Florida. And we pulled everybody together because once some people had left because they were local, these people couldn't leave and we didn't know how long it was going to be. So we pulled the team together and we set up the hotel almost like a cruise ship because people got to eat. And, their co and the companies that were out of, actually out of England that we were working our way through, we set up the ballroom like a cruise ship. And we had uh, breakfast, uh, breakfast uh, our meals were breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And we were serving over 2,500 meals per shift. And we consolidated everybody, kept communicating with everybody, making sure, and we had signs in the lobby so they know what was going on, and we stayed very visible. And even, even, even though the rest of the country was shut down, for the next two, three weeks, our hotel was full. And we made friends, and I, what I tell, I always told my staff, and I could tell you now, when you have a unique event, make friends, because those stories will go a long way and a long time. And that's what we did, and it was and it was quite unique in itself. And we had to get more food in. We got trailers in outside. The staff, we did what we had to do. We still had to make sure we got paid, you know. So I would be talking to England almost every third day to make sure we got uh, some payments because there was so many people in the hotel, and we made sure they felt comfortable because you want to be visible, so you can answer all the questions because people had questions to get answered. And they weren't getting communicated because you just can imagine what was going on in the world. No less, these people were all from overseas that a lot of them were never in the hotel. So that was a unique story. And we made friends and they all came back. A lot of those people came back the following years appreciating what we did for them. But that was a unique story on 9-11. You can also talk about when you have a blizzard. And you can relate that in Rochester. Hotel's full. No staff in. What do you do? You pull people together and you, and you, you make friends and make it work until you can get people out because you want to, because at the end of the day, people just want answers. You know, so it could be a blizzard. I've lived through hurricanes, both in Florida, uh, Virginia, Maryland, Long Island, and Boston. And in, in hurricanes, people come to hotels. And again, 
they eat, they drink, but it's pulling people together, keeping your team visible, having your plan in place, touching base with your guests, let them know the direction we're going and that they'll be safe with us. Yeah, there might be some water around, but at the end of the day, we're fully operational and this is how we're running the ship and visibility is the key. And you continue to thank the staff, continue to thank the guests, let them know if they need anything. But those are just a few stories that I can tell you. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions? Uh, I do. Uh, I would just say, like to say thank you, first of all, Mr. Wolling, for sharing your time with us tonight. Um, though, if you were in our shoes, as many of us are going to be graduates soon, um, especially since we're not too sure how this COVID thing is going to play out in the future, would, is there anything that you would do if you were in our shoes to prepare yourself for after? Amanda, and Amanda, when are you going to be graduating? Um, within a year, uh, next year. Okay, so you've got a little time. I would say start in January, start looking for work. Start doing more networking. The organizations, the clubs, the local and the local community, any of the job fairs, if they're there, even virtual, go ahead and do them because it's visibility. Because whether you want that job or not, the more interviews you go go through, the better. It just makes you feel more comfortable. You got the questions you can sort out, and you want to distinguish yourself. And what what that may, may be, what's going to distinguish Amanda from the other 50 resumes? But you want to network with people in the industry. You want to have someone that you can bounce things off for. You're happy to call me. I'm happy to chat with you. I can tell you my Young Skull members, I talk with them pretty much every two weeks. One's in Orlando, one's in Mobile, Alabama, and one's in uh, Baltimore, Maryland, and a Marriott at, at the Inner Harbor. Just to, well, Aaron called me this morning like 7.50. Keep a couple questions. All right, what are they? You know, and um, the thing is, it's visibility is critical. So whether it's virtual seminars, you go to a sales conference, you go to a meeting planners organization, a catering organization, depending on what segment you're involved in, your visibility is important. Don't be afraid, nothing's wrong. There's a lot of people out of work, nobody did anything wrong, but visibility is the key. So it's having someone that you can bounce thing of, things off uh, after your parents. I always tell my, uh, my uh, mentees or my mentors, you can talk to you, use your parents as a, as a bounce off till about 30. After that, people are gonna to wanna to start wondering about you. But the end of the day is, now I'm kidding. The end of the day is you always wanna have someone that's gonna look out for you. You can get questions answered. You know, whether someone looks at your resumes, someone works on your, your interviewing skills, someone talks to you what you should do. You know, what's gonna distinguish Amanda from the position she's really looking for? And it may not be the first one, but the goal is to have the job before you graduate. When I was at RIT, I had to do a co-op because I transferred in from Morrisville. So I had to stay the summer. So I did a co-op and I stayed the summer to finish in August. But I was working the front office and I got promoted to the front office manager in June and I didn't graduate till August. Now my boss at the time was very flexible to say, my classes were eight to one and I worked three to 11 or later. So it worked out very well and it worked out for me. But Having things that people, you can bounce off of, but go to the job fairs, get your resume out there, update LinkedIn on anything that you've done so people see it. If someone you're gonna go interview with, go on their LinkedIn, learn about them. A couple things that'll get their attention that you know that you've done your research. So I'm preaching to the choir, but start right after Christmas. It's gonna take longer, but continue to do that. And then if some of my students say, I may take go, go get my master's. If you feel it's the right time for you financially and what you want to accomplish, that's okay too, because you know what? And in the tough times that we're dealing with, there's nothing wrong with being in school. So if you can afford it and do it, it's the time to do it because you don't want to get later on and think about should I have gone for my master's? Well, it will still distinguish you, but that doesn't mean that you're not hireable. So all I would say is <clears throat> get ready, prepare yourself, First of the year start, because people start gearing up in January. Because everybody in the industry is saying, this year's history. But they're going to gear up, and they're going to gear up in January slowly. They're not going to bring back the workforce that they brought back before. You know, it's just like the offices. Offices are going to be virtual now. People, companies have found out that it works, that they can do have people work on them virtually. So that segment's going to change a little bit. But the end of the day is stay aggressive, get keep your visibility out there, and try to distinguish yourself. 
Gotcha. Thank you. Would anyone else like to have a question? Going once. Going twice. Jeremy, is it a bashful group? What? Are they shy? Bashful? They may be, because this is our actually our first event. Some of them are um, freshmen and transfer students. Might take a little time to warm up to the yeah. environment. You know, be, you know, being a freshman is you're finding your way, and that's and it's first semester because we were on we were on quarters when I was there. So you can imagine week three, we we're ready into some, uh, we we're in midterms. But now, now you're on semester, so that was a big decision by RIT, and it was a very good one. But freshmen are finding your way. In the transfer from a two-year school in like Monroe Community College or Morrisville or Alfred or, uh, you know, all the, uh, the Sullivan Community College or you've got Delhi or uh, th those colleges, you know, you've had a lot of the core courses. So the key is that you, you're, you're catching up at some of the other courses you have to take at RIT. But the end of the day is you got a great foundation at the two-year school. I'm very proud of what I did with transferring in. And I was very successful <clears throat> further with, with RIT moving forward. So, you know, whether you're a freshman or a transfer, be proud of who you are because you're at RIT and, you, and RIT has a very good reputation in the industry or the other industries that uh, the curriculums that are at RIT. Jeremy, I had a quick question for uh, Keith, if that's okay. Yeah, go ahead. Keith, again, thanks. Uh, for joining us tonight. It's great to see you, especially with that beautiful background. Um, what kind of uh, reading would you suggest, things that you um, look at um, on a regular basis that kind of keeps you informed with what's going on, you know, with the industry, with trends? What would you recommend for students? Good question. Um, and you got me thinking here. Hotel online headlines. That's a daily update of the hospitality industry. Every day it comes out. It's called Hotel Online. So definitely it gives you the communication of what's happening in the industry. So if I look at today's, I'm on my phone, you've got frontline staff, uh, key to top performance in the inaugural JV Power survey. You got it, and that's guest satisfaction benchmark. Lodging Interactive launches micro wedding lead generation service. Hotel sell skills. Nobody asked me, but it's um, Hotel Allegro in Chicago. Benchmarking 101, the bottom line on utility costs. And it goes on and on, but it's a nice, breakdown. I would also, and then each Thursday, it comes out with the star report from the occupancies from the United States for all the markets. So I look at, and it also has Canada as well. So what I do, I get that on Thursday. So I see, I can tell you that the marketplace COVID right now, the United States occupancy is running about 30% occupancy. The Westin, the W, the W or Weston in New York City by Times Square is closing in the middle of October. Closing. This is how tough it is. So it's up to what co hotel companies, how much they're leveraged, what their you know, mortgages may be and what they're dealing with. But um, that comes out. I will tell you that through the, co the, through the course of the summer, any, any beach operation hotel on the ocean on either side or in the Gulf, did fairly well. They probably ran full on weekends and during the week they may ran about 50% occupancy. I will tell you in Orlando, which has been probably one of the top five all year, once it tanked, we're running 30% occupancy. That's with 120,000 rooms in the marketplace because one, groups canceled. We have the largest or the second largest convention center in the country, people canceled. They're not coming. Disney closed, Universal closed, SeaWorld closed. They're running at 25% occupancy right now, the, the, the parks controlling the flow of, of, of the customer. So that's another one, uh, just seeing what's going on. But like, I would look at, um, you, know, you got me thinking now, uh, there's also, um, you know, if you will go on, let me see, let me just look through my calendar here and I'll tell you what I think. Um, you may decide on certain hotel companies you want to follow, the big ones, maybe the big four, Marriott, Interstate, and decide which management companies you want to follow because they have newsletters. So Amanda, if you're in the hotel industry, you could 
take the top 1500 companies, sign up for their newsletter, and then you can check and see what kind of jobs they have to offer. Um, obviously the American Hotel and Lodging Association want to do that. You know, you might do, um, let's see here, just looking on my phone, Brand USA is another one. They have monthly webinars, Brand USA. That's another one, it's in Washington DC. Sign up for that, for that, for those newsletters. If you want to follow the local hotel, restaurant, or lodging association, uh, maybe you want to follow New York City. Um, you may want to follow what's going on in Albany in the travel and tourism segment. Maybe you follow Governor Cuomo because of what's happening in the state. Uh, you can turn around and um, employment sites in the state of New York if you want to follow that. Uh, I fo follow the Florida Restaurant and Lodging Association. I get an update. We have the Central. Florida Restaurant and Lodging Association that I was on the board, executive committee and all, but I follow them both. You may, you, I said about the governor, you may follow H Careers, see what's going on there. Uh, you may fi follow, um, let's see here. Uh, like, like just in um, Florida with Disney, we have Mouse Savers Newsletter. It comes out weekly. Tells you what's going on in Anaheim at Disneyland. Tells you what's going on here in Orlando. You may may be of, of some interest. Uh, you may look at. Um, you may follow what's going on at the airport in Rochester because it's expanding, it's growth. You may find out that there's positions opening up there. Um, you may, may want to find follow the catering. Uh, uh, NACE, NACE is the National Association of Catering Executives. You may follow, want to follow MPI, Meeting Planners International. Um, you may want to follow what's going on with the local Rotary Club. You know, you may, um, so looking online for webinars and, and seeing what's going on uh, is very important and you may pick up some ideas and further ideas. But I think the key is, is following the travel companies the hotel companies, um, and anything that interests you in the field that you show interest in. You can Google it and you'd be surprised what comes up. But I think that that'll give you a few and every day I get, the hotel online is big, the weekly no, stats on hotel occupancies, but on the hotel online, you do get articles and unique things. So it shows the hotels may be selling, hotels that are being purchased, transition, and some of the big companies. You may wanna look at companies to see if they have an intern, uh, internship program to promote you. Um, one of my um, uh, mentors uh, got hired as a as a intern for Drury Hotels. So she was a manager training program. Things happened. She got furloughed. The, the regional called her back, and now she got promoted to assistant manager of the hotel in Mobile, Alabama. It's a great story. She does a great job. And the first, what is your first thing she had learned last week? Hurricanes. So I. I texted her, I said, give me a shout. I want to make sure you're okay and make sure that you're, you know, I'm sure your boss is fine, but hey, heads up. And then I said also, heads up, last week is National Housekeepers Week. Now, I don't know if you know, but I just want to let you know, talk to your boss about it and go from there. So that's always, as I said to her, that when, her, when she asked these questions to her boss, uh, the key would be is your boss might say, where are you getting this information from? And what I would answer is everybody has a guardian angel. So that gives you a little idea where you can search and what you can do. Uh, but the visibility that you have and keeping you up to date on what's going on, I think is very important. Hope I answered that. Thanks. <laughs> um, I also wanted to ask a question, Mr. Wollin, um, in terms of with Skull, how would you recommend students who may be interested in getting involved? Um, how would you, what route would you tell them to get involved with that organization, as well as what are some opportunities that may be present for them there? I know you said the mentorship program is one. Well, the key is that because we're in Orlando and it's such a big market and we have the Rosen School of Hospitality here, so we have the mentorship program there. Scal you can also go on the website for Scal USA. They're out of Washington, DC. So Scal Orlando, we are here. Scal USA is, a, is the global United States organization for SCAL out of Washington, DC. And it was SCAL International was out of Barcelona, Spain. That's the whole international clubs in New Zealand, clubs in, clubs in um, could be France, could be clubs in uh, Australia. So 
Scott USA was probably show you, and if not, I have a listing of all the clubs in the United States. Hang on one second. The key is not every big, every city has, has a club. But if you're getting a job in a particular city, but I'll just run through it real quick. Albany, upstate New York has one. Boston, Long Island, New York, Northern New Jersey, and Puerto Rico. Anchorage, Alaska. They used to have hotels in Anchorage. It's a long way up to Chicago, Columbus, Ohio, Louisville, Kentucky, Nashville, Tennessee, Arkansas, Boise, Idaho, Colorado, Kansas City, New Orleans, Santa Fe. Then you have Atlanta, Baltimore, Charlotte, Myrtle Beach, Raleigh, Durham, Washington, D.C. And as I told you what I had in Florida that I'm keeping an eye on with membership, Fort Lauderdale and Palm Beaches, Jacksonville, Miami, Orlando, Southwest Florida, which is Naples, Tampa Bay. And this is the last segment. Hawaii, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, Orange Coast, Phoenix, and Tucson. So if there's a particular job that you get in a particular city, you could, you could reach out to the club president about SCAL. And uh, there's also a, we'll say a young leader program in SCAL that when you're still starting out, the dues will be a little less. And then as you grow and get promoted, you become a official full-fledged SCAL member, but you still have all the, all the um, uh, benefits of the club organization. So that's what's in the United States, but we continue to grow, want to grow the, grow the, grow the organization, but tourism's not going away. And just remember those two things, clean room and a smile. That's never going to change. Just like in a hotel, in a, in a restaurant, smile, quality food, and good value. Thank you, Keith. So I hope I hope I didn't bore everybody and hope I gave you the information that you're looking for. I'm happy to tackle other topics or or have people if they have a question, they could email me and I surely could answer or chat with them. I'm happy to do it. So you know what? Everybody needs to start with somebody and to, to look out for you. Obviously, people got into this curriculum because somebody motivated them. I had a professor at Marsville that motivated us. It was a group of us and really held us accountable, but we grew. I had Dr. Whitlock at RIT. And I say that because she just retired. She was, I think her first year when, we, when I was a junior when I was there and had her labs and had her classes and she was great. And I was on these committees with her and uh, we haven't lost touch because she's a great lady. You know, so the key is your education is important. Experience does help you and you need that. So get your foot in the door while you're in school because if people interview you and say, well, if you're, if you were um, majoring in hotel operations or hospitality, how come you're not working in the hospitality industry? That would be one thing that would might be a negative, but you may have a good answer on why. So just be careful there. All right. Thank you, Keith, once again, for your amazing speeches. Um, but it looks like we are going to be running out of time soon. I hope everybody could keep in touch with Keith. If you guys have any questions, um, please feel free to email me or Mr. Keith Wolling. Uh, once again, thank you very much for attending our meeting, giving our members, potential new members, a great speech. Um, let's keep in touch, Keith. Stay in touch and I'm happy to be at your service at any time. Muhammad, thank you very much. And everybody, go Tigers. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, students and interpreters and kid everybody. We will be in touch. Good, deal. good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you, Thank Keith. You. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye.